Fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Minecraft Redstone tutorial series. This series builds on itself from episode to episode, so if you haven't seen the previous ones, I highly recommend you go and do so, and the link to the playlist is in the description. Today we'll be looking at inputs too, more inputs, uh, but first of all, the answer to last episode's teaser. Turn on all of these lamps with only one redstone torch, one lever, and one button. Well, the answer is fairly simple once you know how. A lever or button can go here, there we are, because what you want to do is be able to light up the block opposite there, as well as strongly power the one it's connected to to light up this one here. That's all sorted out. If you place a redstone torch under here, it's going to light up the two blocks, plus the one in the middle we can't see strongly. It's going to power all the ones around it weakly. That one does quite well. And then the button or the lever can go here. Again, strongly powering this one so all the ones around it gets powered. And then this one opposite also gets powered as well. All the lights turn on. Right, that is the answer from the teaser. Um, now we come to the first thing of our inputs today, and that is the pressure plate. This is a stone pressure plate in an item frame. This is how you make it, two pieces of stone. So let's get two pieces of stone, put them side by side in the crafting grid, and we get a stone pressure plate. And here is a stone pressure plate on the floor, and just place it by right clicking, and there it is doing nothing. If we stand on it, however, we get a signal. It is a signal strength of 15 whilst it's been stood on, and there is a short delay after it's been stood on until it goes off. You can see here that it lights up this lamp with the redstone dust. This is the pattern that it gives off. Okay, this is a, if you don't know anything about strongly or weakly powered items, go in the playlist and go back to the episode uh, with redstone torches and strongly and weakly powered. Uh, the pressure plate strongly powers uh, the block it's connected to and all adjacent blocks uh, weakly and of course that strongly powered block weakly powers the, its adjacent blocks as well. So this is the powered zone for a pressure plate. And this is a wooden pressure plate. So we've had a stone one, we've got a wooden one which is surprisingly enough two pieces of wood. Now I just need another piece of wood because I didn't have enough in my chest. There we go. Ah, wood. Wood. Oh, there we go. Wood in the chest. Brilliant. Two pieces of wood. There we go to make a wooden pressure plate. Here's a wooden pressure plate, and that's one placed on the ground. Again, if you stand on it, it gives out a, a signal, a slightly different sound. More of a, a clicky, clacky sound than a thunky kind of um, sound. And again, there's the lamp. Oh, what's this chest for? Oh, okay, we'll come back to that. And here we go, uh, the, uh, well, it's got a stone pressure plate in there, but the uh, the idea is, is that the pattern of redstone that it gives off is exactly the same as the stone one, so the block it's connected to is strongly powered, and then all around it is weakly powered. Okay, so what is the difference between these two pressure plates? Why is there two? Well, uh, this one is activated when you step on it, it also activates when mobs step on it, but that's it. You cannot activate it in other ways. Similar to the wooden button, this can be uh, this pressure plate, the wooden one, can be activated in other ways. So when you step on it and when mobs step on it, it activates. But if you drop an item upon it, it also activates it. Okay, it doesn't matter what item it is. Any entity that you drop upon it will activate it. There we go. Let's pick those up. Also, similar to our wooden button, other things activate it as well. So if I shoot it with a bow and arrow, that's going to activate it, and that will stay activated until the arrow despawns or until the arrow is picked up. Of course, with that slight delay again. The other option is a fishing rod will also activate a pressure plate. It doesn't look like it is, but it has. You just got to get it to land on the pressure plate, and yeah, there, there. You see, it was actually in the pressure plate for a moment. There, that's not. Come on, one more time. There we go. It's, it's actually there. We, it's there. We are. It's updated. It's in the pressure plate, and it's activated it. Have I caught a fish? No, I haven't. Right, and that is the first part of pressure plates. Okay, 
Now we move on to the next bit. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. There we go. There are also golden and iron pressure plates. And these are made in the same way. You place two pieces of gold next to each other in the crafting grid or two pieces of iron. And there they are. There's the gold one here. It looks very nice and shiny. And there's the iron one here. It looks kind of silvery shiny. Um, these are quite cool for uh, doing flooring, I like. Uh, if you put a nice uh, floor down and then you put... The only problem is they make a noise when you walk on them. Which you might want. You might want. You never know. Right, and let's see. What's the difference? Well, the signal strength coming out of these pressure plates equals the number of different stacks upon it. Okay, so we're now starting to look at signal strengths. Okay, so up until now, all the signals have been up to, uh, I think, 15. 15 blocks. Now, if we step on this, it only outputs one. You can see, and denoted here by this redstone lamp, marking the one. If we place an item upon it, it also does one. If we play two, place two different items upon it, uh, one, two, it comes up to two. There you look, two different items. Ah, ah, ah. So let's pick up some different blocks and stuff to play around with with this and see if we can get it all the way up to 15. Right, now it doesn't matter how many items are in it. So you can have a full stack. So let's chuck the whole stack of stone on there. And you can see that's only like lit up one block. Okay. Now if I was to take a second stack of stone, there we go, and throw it on there, that will then go up to two. Okay. But if I just put one wooden plank on there, it goes up to three. A different type of wood. Did I get that on? No, I missed. And we're going to try and pick that up now. There we go. A different... Come on. Different type of wood. There we go. Uh, oh, it floated off the back. Can I get it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we are. It's a little bit difficult to throw these perfectly on for you, but there we go. You can see now it's, now it's gone up to four. So it's not the number of items in a stack, it's how many different stacks you've got on there. Okay? And that goes all the way up to 15, so hopefully, let's see if I can, I can throw, was that 5, 6, 7, 8, I think, 9, 10, let's get more items, let's get some polished stuff and bits. Right, throw. Throw, 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 throw. Right, we, I think we've got 15 items on there. Yep, there we go. Look, we've come all the way up to 15 metres away from the pressure plate. And you can't do anything more than that. If you threw more on, it wouldn't go any further. Now, that is the golden pressure plate. Uh, of course, if I stood on there, that would also count as an item, but I'd pick up all the different items, so we don't do that. Here is the iron one. This one's a little bit more complicated. Okay. Now, the strength is equal up to the different item stacks, same as this one, but times 10. Okay, so 1 to 10 item stacks is 1. So if we... Actually, i tell you what, what we'll do is we'll place... We'll place a bit of... Uh, st uh, what do you call this stuff? Sandstone. We'll place some sandstone there so I can lob things at it better. So we're going to lob 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seven, eight, right, that's eight items on it. It says one to ten, we've still only got one signal, nine, ten. Right, that's ten different stacks of items upon it and it's still only one signal. Then, if we go into eleven, you can see it's gone up to a second signal there. And that's different stacks again. So I could get a stack of stone, eleven, uh, I think it's twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I think that is, if I've counted right, 21, yes, look, and on, um, for two, for two lights, for a signal strength of two, it's 11 to 20, so we went to 21, and it's gone up to three, and so on and so on, 11 to 20, seven lights would be 61, of course, 15 lights would be 141 stacks plus, so there's a lot there, and as the items despawn, you can see that um, the signal strength goes down again. Right, 
got a lot of stone in my inventory. Uh, just one last quick note on these pressure plates. Um, there's the signal that they give off is the same uh, pattern as the previous one, so the block that it's connected to is strongly powered and all adjacent blocks are weakly powered. That's going to be it for today. It's been quite a big one and if you don't quite get the number of items on the pressure plates, just watch it one more time, I'm sure you'll get it. Um, but that has been pressure plates. Next time we are going to move on to light sources. Um, light dependent things and that really does get deeper into signal strength and um, yeah we'll see you then if you've got any thoughts ideas or questions please pop them down in the comments below and if, of course the world download is available the link in the description as well and you can download the world and play around with this to your heart's content like I said that's all from me for now take care goodbye